But uh, someone said it in the WilbertSports.com chat thread, so uh, my apologies, I missed the name. Now talk about Patrick Kane. Yes, sir! Okay, we will do that right now. Uh, Red Wings did sign Patrick Kane this morning, and look. Which, which, the term is the key. The term is the key. BMG, you had it, you dug it up. It's one year, 2.75, it's just salary. No bonuses, nothing. Yep. So, uh, 35-year-olds coming off hip resurfacing surgery after meeting with several teams. Uh, Emily Kaplan was told Kane was very impressed with Detroit's coach, Derek Lalonde's X's and O's and hockey acumen and vision for Detroit. Um, and let's go Red Wings party. Low risk, high reward. I dig it. And, you know, for me, look, I, you know, it meets my parameters. You had that cap space sitting there anyway. You weren't doing anything with it Number anyway. One. Take a spin. Number one, let's break that down, right? Mikey, what'd you say before making this move? We had roughly seven and a half million. No, I want to say it was like six million. Okay, so so still, this puts you over three million dollars still to be able. This does not hamstring you, Neil. I'm going to ask you because I always go to you for this. This does not put you in a bad hamstring position come trade deadline. No, if you want to make, and here's to the make why. Any other move? Here's the why. Thank you. Because at trade deadline, you can still take that swing on an expiring veteran that can help you because three quarters of their contract have been paid off already. So $3 million at the trade deadline in the NFL, that's... The that, NFL or NHL? Or in the NHL, I'm sorry. $3 million at the trade deadline in the NHL, that's an arsenal. Those are weapons that you can use. So everything is still on the table for you. 100%. Another thing, Mikey, which we were talking about beforehand, as far as the lineup, right? Because when you look at this from the 30,000-foot sort of perspective is you're adding Patrick Kane, who, A, the question mark is he's coming off a surgery. We're going to talk about this. Coming off a surgery that three other guys have had that has ended their career, one, one playing the most eight to ten games. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what we were talking about, you really like this because it enabled them to do what that they've been really successful at this year as far as their lineup. Well, it just provides depth for the lineup in, in a sense. You can have two lines. You can separate the forwards. I talked to you before the show, and I said it wouldn't be a bad idea necessarily to move uh, Kane on a line with Debrinket and Comfort, just the way the play styles go. And you have a Comfort, a guy who is – very well two play uh two-way player and he has a lot of offense and a lot of playmaking to him so i think you pair those guys together on the second line or technically a second line but it's more like a first and then you have larkin raymond with a Perron or a valino on the first line and it just provides you that depth that a lot of other great teams in the league have a lot of those teams they split up their guys like that and obviously you've seen the past two games uh debrink has been moved around a little bit and they still show in success so I don't think it's very far off if you see them go back to what their first line was last year with Perron, Larkin, and Raymond, and then kind of boost uh, Debrinket, Comfort, and uh, Kane together. Here's where I was going with that. What's this team been successful when they played 11 forwards and 7 oh, 11, I believe yeah, they're 4-0 this year. Maybe 5-0 and with this lineup, right? What have we also seen? Right, A guy who is very valuable in the lineup when he is healthy, a Robbie Fabry right who can be effective right but it's a, a factor some sort of injuries with age i think that this enables them not only you're talking about who he's going to play with and stuff like this to ease more into the lineup to be more effective as one of those extra two pairs the offensive pairs i think that this is this is a huge thing because we all know that this team still needs defense or or we're Question marks is keeping the puck out of the net. Kane adds scoring no matter what. Now we get into the injury wise. Um, who are the other guys? It was, it was Ryan Kessler, he retired. Uh, Nick Ryan Kessler, Nick Carl Backstrom, Hagelin, and Backstrom. Carl yeah. Hagelin, right? So this surgery, not performed by the same surgeon, which I believe is can be important when it hasn't worked in the past. But the bottom line, Neil, I haven't said it in a while because it's football season. But this is apropos. Hashtag Wiser Plan 1919. Yeah. That's what it is, baby. He Stevie says yes. Stevie says money. Everything's right. It all fits in. This can only be a bonus. If say what happens, guys. Last question. What happens if he never plays a game 
and you burn two point seven five million on your roster. So what? So what? To me, the end of the day, it tells me Steve Eisman changed his mind. He thinks like Darren McCarty. That clocks off this team, and playoff team this year. Frank Savelli t- tweeted this out, and he said uh, one of the two things that helped bring Kane to Detroit was Steve Eiserman flying to Toronto and meeting with Kane face-to-face. Where do you fly to? Toronto. Toronto. Where's that? Toronto. Where's that? Is that near Toronto at all? Fuck <laughs> off. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that, that no! got him. But uh, uh, and that they broke up the Debrinket line and they separated the line. So that was one of the things that helped in pursuing Patrick Kane. And that he noted that down that those lines are splitting up and that depth could be uh, a reason why he was brought here. Well, bottom no. line, you know, I, I want to get you know what you have to think about this deal. But yeah, because I got a couple, thing couple is, of different is, angles. Is okay, but but at the end of the day. We're all on the same page as, as this is well, like... Well, not everybody's on the same page. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, though. we're... we're, we're do you, I'm grabbing that right now. Okay, yeah. We're, not everybody's on the same page. We'll get there, though. Uh, kind of my 30,000 foot on it is this. Um, is it a tough surgery to come back from? Woolworthsports.com, chat thread, Detroit Dabber through and through. That's a tough surgery to bounce back from. I'll defer to you on that one, Oh, D-Mac. no one's come back from it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean, played, uh, what, what did Backstrom play, eight games? Yeah, and then the three other players, beside, aside from Backstrom, did not play a game. So Yeah, ended his career. Yeah. Ended Backstrom's career. But, so there but, is that. but to saying that, Jack Eichel, who led the Las Vegas... Uh, Golden Knights to their Stanley Cup last year had a once in a lifetime surgery done to his neck or whatever that, that he came back from. He so, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Yes, so, he does. So, so, but it's worth the risk. I'm asking everybody, it's worth the risk. Yeah, there is no risk. Because it does. And, and also, it's so that's why my, first, right. my first question was important. Does it hurt them moving forward at the deadline? You said absolutely no. not. Boom. That's all I needed to know, right? You didn't even have to take that into consideration. Because think about, it, do the math real quick. Like if you have do three million, three million bucks in salary cap space, and the season's three quarters of the way over, what does that extrapolate? That what do, what type of player does that allow you to afford? A twelve million dollar player, right? And you would, assuming you do acquire another player, you are giving away assets too, and that would probably be one of those bottom uh, bottom six forwards and a defense. Yeah. So so, so here's one here's one of the questions that I'm getting to. Uh, Mick Ray, and I'll defer to you, BMG. You, what's the soonest they might see Kane in the lineup? Um, I would I would give it maybe like a week and a half. He still ha- he still has to learn the system. He still has to get skating, obviously skate with the team. So I would say like a week and a half, two weeks. Okay. But it, it may be sooner. I don't I'm not too sure on how <laughs> far ahead he is in his progress or if he's even ahead. But you want to at least give him time to skate with the team, learn the system and stuff like that. So I would say like. A week or so. He's not the Pistons. He doesn't need to get in there. Yeah. As, as uh, so, so here's here's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, I like it because here's what it is. Yes, the surgery notwithstanding, and how does he bounce back? I can only go by the data of what he is. And even at 35, he's a 20 goal a, ga- a year guy. That's what he is. Even at 35, that's what he is. He's a what 55 ish, 60 point guy. And here's here's the reality of the situation, D Mac. And and there there's two angles of attack on this. Number one, he slots in, and D Mac, I'm not coming at you when I say this. I, I hope you understand this. But you put a 35 year old Patrick Kane coming off this surgery, to me, boom, he's at a higher level than Michael Rasmussen is. He he just is. He just is. Well, not today. Skill, I'm talking today. Spencer got you're talking that, skill, man. but not to what he <laughs> was in this lineup, right? So to, 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 to not a better what he player. means in the lineup because that that's the it's now if we're gonna get semantics and it, like this is the conversation I couldn't have with Sam Flannel because it has nothing to do with stats, right? Right? It has to do with on uh, and right now Michael Rasmussen is way more valuable than Patrick Kane. Now if Patrick Kane is is five years ago Patrick Kane but but if I'm giving you the 20 goal 60 point Patrick Kane which he's been the it. last couple years I don't need it. do I need goals right now no no I mean you'll take them I mean I'll <laughs> take like, them. Right, right. But, <laughs> but you're not taking it away from developing that overall game which is the shutdown now he's gonna have to get up to speed and buy into the system but you have the luxury to ease him in but no uh, when um, you got to pick somebody other than Rasmussen you could pick you know, maybe, 
Yeah, well, yeah, but that fourth line, but you see what they've done. And, oh, small flex. They also called up Johnny Berger's, uh, um, Spenny's yeah. guy uh, from Johnny Grand Rapids. Berger's. So, to me, they're, it's, they're using a lot of guys. And to me, they're not going to, they're going to use them specifically for some reason. And they're not going to overtax him with minutes until he proves right. that he has to earn it. And I'm, I'm talking like, but no, all in, you know what I'm saying? Like everything operating the way it's supposed to operate. We don't know the answer to that. I'm, I'm talking about in, like, gen, like in generality. So here's the thing, Neil, and it's like it, Patrick Kane playing top minutes, being being a productive Patrick Kane, yes, is more valuable than Michael Rasmussen up there. But what Rasmussen does in the lineup is totally, you have to, you, you, you have to sit it's down. It's There's more it's, nuance it's, to it's it. Way and nuanced, I get that. And we saw last year when he got hurt. What happened? That was the biggest reason for their fold, right? Because because he was playing the best hockey of his life, and he was able to, you know, when he transitioned to the wings. So he's asked to do a lot of things that are that are little things, but gonna gonna help this team get the goals against down and be a better productive. I just so you might not see Kane till Christmas. Yeah, and I, and I'm not like again, I'm not I'm not crapping on Rasmussen by any means. I'm just telling you that's to me that's the impact that this could have. Oh, if he's good, right? Like, like if, if he's he had just that, what he was the last three years. What's that? If he's just what he was at 34, 20 goals, 55 points. And a year before that, he had 92 points. So. You see what I, you see? <laughs> yeah. Where I'm going here? Yeah. Right. Like, I, I, I get it. You you get my argument here. Mm -hmm. what, fine, take also, Rasmussen. I'll put but, Fabry in there. Guys, like, yeah. He's better than Fabry. He just is. Yeah. But this is also too the longer play. When I said this tells me Steve Eisenman is looking at the playoffs. Right, it's and looking that's the, for the longer other run, angle. and it's also too. What do you need out of Patrick Kane? Forty games? You just need him to be whatever to make him a hundred, hundred percent, and that guy going into the playoffs. Right, and the other angle of this for me, I love what this signifies because we're pushing in now. And granted, it's it's low risk. It's not like he, you know, it's yeah, not but like you got he's, a high. It's it's it is something because you got a name guy. It, it's it's you what got, it signifies. You got a name guy that who could have, what are we say, talking about? Mikey, you said you're surprised he didn't go to Boston. Yeah, I know. The rumors for Boston picked up over the weekend, and it, I guess it was narrowed down to two Eastern Conference teams. So that kind of rubbed me the wrong way at first. I, I was like, God damn it, he's going to go to Boston. The Red Wings aren't going to do it. But what do you know? He Steve ends up Eisen, in Detroit. It, to tell you anything, Steve Eisman got on a plane. Got the fuck. Right? And he went to Toronto. He went to Toronto. Toronto. No, but, but DMAC, I love what this signifies yes. because the old shit is over. That's over now. It is, it's full steam ahead. If there's, a, right. if there's a move Thank that you. can be made, we're going to make it, and we're going full steam ahead for the playoffs. That's what this move signifies, even if it doesn't work at all. I love what it represents because the Red Wings are back in the playoff discussion now. That's what I love. I love this move for that reason. What it represents. We're not sitting here talking about, well, we need another year of development from this forward that we drafted. No, we're going and getting. We're getting in the streets, DMAC. Yep. Thank you, Jacob Shives. <laughs> Appreciate you. DMAC, you were right. Yep. Yeah, you can spell it incorrectly. I know you meant it was me. Um, but I appreciate that. See, cats? See what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> Opposite cats. Yeah. Brandon Katz will never know what it feels like.